Hello YouTubers, Jim from Ohio here with another update on my DIY solar project and primarily the solar control board that you see behind me. Uh, for those of you that have been tuning along uh, during this entire project, you'll probably remember that uh, I mentioned that I was still waiting on a part from China for this uh, box right here. That part did come in and I mentioned that when it came in I would do another video to share the wiring diagram and a parts list for what I've got here. Uh, for those of you who have not uh, tuned in and this is the first video, I'd like to kind of describe a little bit what I've got going on here and why I chose to do things in the way that I've done it. Uh, everything uh, from this blue device over this way on the controller board is a grid tie setup. Everything on this side of the controller board is an off-grid setup. Now I'd like to explain a little bit about uh, what a grid tie setup is and how it works and why I opted to go with this. Uh, this is a Sun uh, grid tie inverter and this is a one kilowatt inverter. What it does is it takes uh, energy from the solar panels uh, gets fed into the top of it and it converts that DC power from the panels into AC power that can be used in your house and you uh, normally on the bottom of it you had to have a standard wall plug that you plug into a standard uh, outlet in your home and it converts that uh, DC power or solar power over to usable electricity. Um, now there's uh, some good points and bad points uh, with a device like this um, one of the things that uh, a lot of people may or may not know is these devices uh, are not UL approved and since they're not UL approved usually your local power company will not authorize you to plug this device into your home and backfeed energy to the grid which is exactly what this device is, is set up to do. Um, so the reason I chose this particular device is because it has an extra, uh, an extra item built into it known as a limiter. So I can go into the settings and program the limiter function and uh, what it does is it has a uh, clamp that looks like this and uh, this plugs into the top of the device and runs over to my electrical panel and uh, this is uh, meant to be clamped over one of the 120 volt legs that come into my home. Now I am in the US so I have a 240 uh, volt panel and that's divided into two separate 120 volt legs and this clamps over one of the legs so it knows exactly how much energy that leg is uh, is being how much energy is being used in my home and uh, it will limit this device to that amount in other words if I'm producing if, I, if my home is using 500 watts on that leg of my panel uh, the circuit breaker panel uh, and I'm producing 500 watts from my solar panels uh, it will use that 500 watts in my home first now if I'm producing say a thousand watts with this but my home is only using 500 watts it normally with a grid tie inverter the 500 watts that my home is consuming will remain in my home and the remaining 500 watts would go out and be introduced into my local commercial grid now that's what I want to avoid happening because that'll cause my meter to spin backwards, that'll get the attention of my power company and they'll probably come knocking on my door or send me a nasty letter. So what this device does is it limits that power so it never feeds anything back to the grid. Therefore they really don't know that I've got this in my home. Uh, my home will use the power that this produces but any extra power uh, the inverter just uh, will not use that power, won't introduce it back into the grid. Uh, so that's how this unit works and why I chose the device with the limiter. Now the way I look at uh, solar energy and the different possible setups you can have in your house, uh, you could go the expensive route and you can have uh, go get a permit from your local power company and in order to get that permit they're going to want to do an assessment they're going to want to make sure you hire a professional 
licensed electrician, they're going to want to make sure that you have a plan that you submit to them and they approve, and then they want you to get an inspector that comes out to your home to double check what that electrician did. And uh, then they'll authorize you to connect a certain equipment to the grid but that equipment is usually the higher price equipment that you, is UL approved and each phase of that process costs a little bit more money. The electrician is going to want to get paid, the uh, person who comes out and does the inspection is going to want to get paid and some local utility companies they're going to want you to pay for that application uh, to get the permit from them ba to basically back feed to the grid. And I opted not to go that route just because there, is, there, there are additional expenses. Um, uh, but then again, I, don't, I, don't, I feel if I'm using the power locally in my house, I shouldn't have to get permission from somebody else to do that. Since I'm not back feeding into their grid, there's really no need to get their permission. Now, uh, one of the things that a lot of other people will do when they uh, set up something like this is they take what I refer to as the redneck approach or the redneck installation and there's nothing wrong with it. It basically takes that electricity or the, the DC power coming in from the panels and as I mentioned it plugs directly into a standard wall outlet and you're still making power on your own. There's nothing wrong with doing it that way but uh, some of the things that some of those people don't really consider are the ramifications if they don't take certain steps uh, in advance. For instance, that uh, the electrical outlet they're, they're plugging this device into, um, what if something else in the house is also on the same circuit? Now if I'm back feeding a thousand watts through a, say a 15 amp uh, electrical outlet, um, that's using most of the power that that this uh, standard outlet is designed to do. Now if this uh, circuit also goes to another room in the house and say my wife is blow drying her hair with a 1500 watt uh, blow dryer, now you've got 2500 watts going through an outlet that wasn't designed to do that. That's going to cause the wiring in the house to heat up and there's potential for a fire. Uh, now, the other thing that isn't really taken into consideration is, you know, there's power that comes in from the panels. If there's a nearby lightning strike, what happens to that surge of energy that's now going to be coming into your home? Uh, so with the redneck approach, some of those things aren't really thought out in advance. Now, the other thing that could happen is uh, there, there are certain situations, I've seen a lot of these devices go bad. Uh, in videos online, the uh, MOSFETs inside will get fried. Uh, the unit somehow gets damaged and, and usually the damage is caused either from extra energy coming in from outside of the house or it could possibly be from electricity that's back feeding from your local grid. Say there's a surge of energy coming from yeah, the, the local power grid, the utility company. That happens. So I wanted to do a couple things to uh, eliminate that. So rather than taking the professional route or the redneck route, I'm doing what I refer to as the underground approach. So I'm going to do things uh, the way that a licensed electrician would. I did a lot of research to find out the best ways to put things together, the safest ap approach to do things, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Uh, now I am not an electrician, I'm just a do-it-yourselfer, so Anything that I show you today, please take with a grain of salt. Please go out and do your own research to make sure that you're doing things correctly and primarily safely in your home. So the first thing that I did before I even got started was I wired in a separate electrical outlet that I'm going to plug this device into. Uh, it's on a dedicated circuit breaker in my electrical panel. With it being a dedicated breaker, I know that there's no possibility of anything else in my house utilizing additional electricity from the same circuit that I'm going to have this device plugged into. So there's no way that I'm going to overload it. This device can only put up, put out up to a thousand watts of energy and with a 15 amp circuit breaker, I know that breaker can handle 1500 or I'm sorry, a thousand watts. Uh, no problem. And so that's the first thing that I did to make sure that things were safe.
Now the next thing that I did was I did a lot of research to see, you know, what else, what safety precautions or devices can I connect to this device to protect surges from coming in from outside of the house or to protect this piece of equipment from surges coming from inside of the house. So uh, what I did, I, I looked around all over online, I watched hundreds of videos of other people that have hooked these up, and I saw that a lot of the people overseas were using a lot of the same equipment. You know, the boxes that look like this with different circuit breakers and different things. And so in, in looking around, I stumbled across a Facebook uh, group, and that Facebook group, if you want to look it up yourself, it's uh, Sun G Grid Tie Inverter with Limiter. Uh, all spelled out Sun, the letter G, Grid Tie Inverter with Limiter. And that's a group run by a gentleman by the name of Roger Naval, and I believe he's down in the Philippines. Uh, some of the uh, posts on that Facebook group is in English, and some of it is in uh, other languages. And I, I believe Roger is in the Philippines, but he seems to be the foremost authority on these devices. I don't know if he works for the company that produces those or, or not, but I know that uh, he always answers a lot of the questions that are posted and he's made recommendations on a lot of the safety equipment. Now, one of the things that I found with the safety equipment that uh, he usually talks about, uh, the items that he recommends are usually those in the 220 to 240 volt range, uh, which some of that stuff I can use in my environment, but some of it I found simply would not work because this device is putting out 120 volts rather than uh, 220 or 240. And I, I just found in trial and error testing, some of the stuff just simply didn't work. So what I did was uh, I, I uh, did more research to find out would work here in the U.S. And so that's what this video is about. So I'm going to talk to those in the U.S., uh, tell you what you can buy to uh, make this work. But I did use uh, where uh, Roger recommended some of this equipment. Um, I am using some of the equipment that he did recommend. Uh, so what I'd like to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and just pop the covers off of these to show you uh, the wiring and uh, talk about why I did things and what each of the individual components are for. And uh, you can look down below in the details of this video uh, for a parts list. Uh, now, uh, uh, what I put are the parts that I found worked for me. They may or may not work for you. Uh, same with the wiring diagram. I did a lot of trial and error testing with the wiring to make sure everything, uh, all the components worked well. And you can, uh, I'll, I'll put snapshots. Uh, so when you get to the wiring diagram section of the video, just freeze frame the video and take a look at it. If you're going to print it out, I do recommend you print it out in color. Uh, because I did all of the uh, positive uh, wiring uh, is in red, all of the negative wiring is in black, and everything that needs to go to ground is in green. Um, now I would like to just mention up front, uh, I'm not an affiliate. Most of the parts that I ordered from China came from a website known as AliExpress, which is, a, I guess, a subsidiary to uh, Alibaba.com, which is the Chinese version of, in the U.S., we have Amazon.com. Uh, I'm not an affiliate. You'll notice most of the parts, that's where I got. And that's just because I was not able to find a lot of these parts American-made, and so I had no choice but to go to China to get those. Now, the good part of ordering things from China is you can get things very, very cheaply. Uh, most of the components were only a couple bucks. I think the most I paid for any of these components was about $15, uh, except for, you know, one of the cheaper components, this box right here, was only about $5 for the box, but I had to pay almost $20 to order it from China. And I chose to do that just because I couldn't find anything similar to it here in the U.S. So uh, whether or not you go with these components is totally up to you. Now the downside to ordering from China is some of these take forever. I mean, I waited a month and a half for some of these items to come to me. So uh, just if you're going to do that, you're going to have to be patient and wait for the stuff to, to get to you or find a, a local source for the uh, same pieces of equipment. Uh, 
So all of the parts that I'm going to recommend, I'm not an affiliate, I'm just sharing this out there with the internet community. Uh, this device you can order from eBay or Amazon. Um, again, I'm not making anything off of it. Just go find the cheapest place that you can get it. I think I ordered from a company called Gaia Green uh, that is found on eBay. Um, so uh, let's go ahead and pop the covers off of these and I'll talk about each of the components and show you some of the wiring. Okay, I guess I'll start with the inverter itself. As I mentioned, this is a Sun grid tie inverter. This is a 1000 watt inverter. And uh, they do make this also in a 2000 watt uh, model. And uh, I may upgrade to that at a later date, but for right now, for my budget, the 1000 watt inverter is the one that I went with. Now there are a couple different versions of this available. This is the US model or the 110 or 120 model. Uh, they do have a 220 model and you do not want to order that one if you live in the United States. Uh, then they do make uh, different options available for this one. Uh, some of them have a lower voltage. Uh, they run um, on I think a 24 volt input from outside. Now I went with the higher voltage model. I'm going to be running higher voltage from my panels. and. Um, so uh, just go online and look and read the description and determine what's going to work best for you. Uh, but typically the way that this works is up on the top there's a couple inputs where you typically will hook your solar panels and I'll talk about that in, in just a little bit. And then there are a couple other ports on the top uh, and this is where you would connect either an external limiter or I'm going to use the internal limiter so uh, one of these ports up on the top is for the internal limiter. Now down at the bottom of the unit, uh, there are a couple fans down here. I really don't know why the fans are at the bottom rather than the top. Normally you want to pull heat out of it, but uh, what these do is they pull the cool air in and they blow it out through the top. Uh, and then there's a standard electrical, uh, kind of like a computer uh, uh, out, uh, electrical uh, output uh, that just plugs into there and you would typically plug that into a, a standard AC wall outlet. Um, now uh, I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm not going directly into the electrical wall outlet and there's a reason for that. Uh, so that's the device and typically like I mentioned you would hook your solar panels in at the top. Now uh, what I'm going to be doing differently is uh, I still don't have my solar panels hooked up yet. Uh, the weather here in Ohio has been, we've had a really long winter and now that winter's gone we're getting a lot of rain. So I haven't had a chance to uh, put my posts in the ground and, and mount my panels. So uh, that, that's coming soon. But what I do is when I get the panels wired in they're going to come into this device first. And this is just a Halix 60 amp uh, disconnect switch. This is what you would typically connect your air conditioning unit uh, outside of your house would be connected to one of these. Now this is rated for both AC and DC and so uh, it's a quick disconnect. My, uh, my solar panels will be wired into this first uh, and by pulling this uh, plug or this plunger at the top, that's going to disconnect my uh, panels from everything that's here. And that's going to allow me, anytime I need to maintain anything inside the house, I can just simply pull this. That disconnects. There's no way that uh, any power is going to be coming in from the panels while doing that. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull this. Uh, so what I've got here, once I get my uh, panels wired in, my panels will be wired to the two outside lugs here. And um, when I put the plunger into place, that's going to connect the outside uh, lugs to the inside lugs. And you can see I've got a positive and a negative cable here. And these run from this 
uh, this disconnect switch. They run back behind my controller board and they come into this box right here. Now this is uh, this box I got from AliExpress and what I've got here is a, uh, a breaker switch and I'm using a 20 amp breaker and uh, look down below for the parts, uh, the details on what to order if you want to use this. But the uh, power comes from over here uh, and then it comes into the switch right here. And then uh, you'll notice uh, I've got a couple other jumper wires that also are plugged into the same lugs at the top. And what that's for is this, this is a surge protection device on this side. And this is a, a two pole, meaning the, uh, both the positive leg and the negative leg are protected. So if I get a surge of energy, a nearby lightning strike, I doubt it's gonna take, uh, handle a direct lightning strike, but anything nearby that feeds back into my, uh, into my system, what this is going to do is this uh, is going to protect uh, everything that I've got inside. So what it does is it takes the energy from here and then on the bottom uh, there's, you notice a little shiny wire right here. That goes to the ground in my house. So electricity is always going to take the quickest path to ground and this is going to provide that path. So uh, that's just a couple jumpers there and it outputs to the ground. Now in the on position, uh, what that's going to do is, is this is just a breaker. It does the same thing this does, only this is a disconnect. It disconnects everything, uh, meaning no power is even going to go to here. Uh, this is the quickest way for me to turn on and off power from outside. Um, so this is just a, a second layer of protection. Uh, that this is doing right here. Um, so uh, that is the input side and really that's all there is to it. So once this switch is on, you'll notice the two wires that go out, they go back behind the panel and then they come out up here on the top. So whenever this switch is on, it's going to feed electricity to the uh, input side of the inverter. So uh, that's, that's the input side. Now, uh, I mentioned that sometimes people have had problems with this unit uh, at frying, the MOSFETs going bad, and it could be from surges of energy coming from inside the house, or I'm sorry, from uh, outside the panels. So this is gonna protect this device, so there's uh, no way a surge is gonna make it over here. It'll be trapped here first, hopefully. Now, the other way that this unit can be damaged, I mentioned that it's possible to have a surge of energy coming from your circuit breaker panel in your house. So that's what all of this is for. Uh, th there's some protection built into here as well as a couple other uh, features that I wanted to add. So uh, we talked about the input side, so the electricity is being uh, produced from the, the uh, power coming in from the panels and normally it would come out here and this would get plugged into a wall outlet but what I've done instead is I've run it over to here in this box. So let's talk about some of the components in this box and what is all of this stuff. Well the first thing that I've got, the first thing that uh, the power comes into is this is a, a timer. Uh, this is called a SIN timer and what I can do with this is I can select the hours of operation, the hours that the sun is going to be produced in power here locally. And uh, what this will do is uh, at nighttime, it will automatically shut my inverter off. There's no use for my inverter to run all night long. There's no power that's going to be produced at night, so there's no sense in it being on. Uh, while it is on, you know, the fans could possibly come on if the display uh, is lit. Uh, that's going to use energy, and because there's no energy being produced from the panels, you know, that's going to come from my uh, inside wiring, and the last thing I want to do is, is use electricity uh, needlessly. So what this device does is it simply, you know, turns this on in the morning, and then at nighttime it turns it off. Um, so the other thing is 
if there's a storm in the middle of the night, you know, that's always a risk that uh, energy can come from outside or my local power can go off. The inside wiring could flicker. That's when surges will usually happen. Well, if, if this has uh, this device turned off, there's no way that it's going to take a surge and be damaged. So this is just an extra layer of protection. Now, Roger Naval, uh, the Facebook guy that I mentioned, he does recommend a timer, but the timer that he recommends is actually this timer right here. Uh, so if you go to that Facebook uh, page and look at this timer, uh, I can let you know if you are in the, un uh, the United States, do not order this timer. It's not going to work for this particular setup. Uh, this is for a 220 volt setup and it will not work here in the States. Trust me, I've tried it. So what I had to do was I had to find a, a comparable replacement and while this one is a little bit smaller, it doesn't have the nice big readout and the great big buttons. Um, this one uh, actually is a little bit nicer. Uh, it has a couple other features the other one doesn't have and I don't have to cut a big section out of the front panel of my uh, distribution box to make it work. This one plugs right into the DIN rail and and uh, it's, it's a little more compact although it is a little bit harder to read. So that's what this first component is. Now from here, uh, we go over to this component right here. And what this component is, uh, this is an under and over voltage protection device. So in other words, if from my internal, my commercial grid in the house, which uh, this device does rely on the grid, meaning because it's a grid tie inverter, it has to detect energy coming from the grid or it's going to automatically shut off. And that's something known as grid island protection. And that's so you don't accidentally feed power back uh, to your local commercial grid in the amount of a uh, power failure and, and possibly risk electrocuting alignment. So when the grid goes down, this grows, goes down too. It doesn't work at all. That's why I have these devices over here, which is my off-grid side. But uh, back over here, uh, this under and over voltage protection, what it does is if my local grid power either drops too low or it surges too high, this is going to kick in and it's going to protect things uh, once again. It's going to temporarily shut things off. Now there's a timer that's built into this and I can, with this device, I can, I can go in and uh, set the high limit and the low limit as well as the uh, amount of time that this device uh, is shut off. So if say my power in my house surges above 125 volts, which is what I have it programmed for, it'll automatically shut everything off for 30 seconds and it'll wait for the power to stabilize again and then after it stabilizes then it'll automatically turn the power back on uh, and if this timer is within the window of operation hours then it will uh, reestablish the connectivity over to the inverter and I'll show you a demonstration of that work. Same thing in a low voltage so if the power goes out say we have an electrical storm or something like that and the power goes out normally when the power comes back on it takes a few seconds before it stabilizes while it's stabilizing there can be surges uh, or the power can maybe come on then go off then come on then go off which we normally see in a uh, nearby uh, electrical storm um, what this will do is it will protect everything with that time circuit so uh, uh, now uh, Roger Naval does recommend one of these also. Uh, he recommends something that looks like this. Uh, once again, this is designed for the 220 version and it will not work here in the US. Uh, this one is actually easier to wire than the one that I've got and uh, it's not programmable like the one that I have. So uh, mine offers a little more flexibility but is a little diff more difficult to wire in than this one. Um, but uh, then we get over to, you probably recognize these two pieces of equipment. 
uh, from up here and it's basically the same thing only these are the AC versions there are different part numbers for these than the ones up here since these are handling DC power coming in from the uh, solar panels uh, but these are working with AC power from my breaker panel in my house uh, it's important that you order the right ones so uh, this is a 16 amp breaker and uh, once again uh, we have jumper wires that come across uh, to this device right here which once again are going to protect any surges that come into the house down at the bottom uh, there is a um, there is a uh, ground cable that comes out and it goes to uh, one of the ground bars which goes over to the uh, uh, ground in my circuit breaker box. Um, so that's what those two devices, same thing is up here, only the AC versions of it. And then from here we go over into, this is just a, a multimeter. Uh, this will show me the uh, volts, the amps, and the watts. And then it also has an option uh, switch. I can switch it over to show the time and uh, hours and minutes, as well as the kilowatts used. So if you're familiar with a, a kilowatt meter, this is uh, similar to a kilowatt meter. The reason I went with this option instead of a kilowatt meter is uh, this one was a little bit cheaper. But uh, this one, uh, what I found with the kilowatt meter, uh, typically you would plug it into your outlet and then you would plug the inverter into the kilowatt meter to uh, measure all the power that you produced. Well, that's all well and good, but the kilowatt meter does take up both of your outlets uh, and I didn't want to do that first of all but the other thing that the kilowatt meter does is if you turn the power off or you have an electrical outage the kilowatt meter will wipe all of its settings so it in the case that you've been running all month and say the last day of the month uh, you have a power outage it's gonna wipe all the settings and you can't get a true end of month a reading well this one uh, has a memory built into it so even though it loses power uh, it uh, it does retain the settings in the memory of the device and so I just thought that would be more convenient to do that so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn things on and let you kinda see how this works uh, so to do that uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is, um, well, well, here, one, one other thing I want to mention. This is the cord that came with this unit. What I did, I simply cut it in half and I spliced it in here, the input side to all my components, and then this is the other half of it. I've got it wired in, so realistically, we can still come down here and plug it into a, an outlet. Now when you do that, you notice my meter immediately comes on. Uh, it shows the uh, electricity that is coming uh, in from my local home grid, uh, measuring amps and watts. And we've got a switch here. We can switch it over. Uh, and this is going to show the, uh, I'm not sure what this is at the top. If anybody else knows, it says COS. Uh, so I'm not sure what that is. Uh, if anybody else knows, let me uh, let me know. But down here is a time meter, and down here this will keep track of the kilowatts that's being produced. So to uh, turn the power on to this device, uh, what I'm going to do next is go ahead and turn on the breaker. And when I do that, you'll see this device come on and start counting. 30 seconds and that's because since the power has been off that would be a low uh, or an under voltage condition so it's going to engage the timer and it's not going to send energy over to this and this until 30 seconds has passed so I'm going to go ahead and uh, flip the breaker and when I do that you notice that this is energized uh, and the timer has started to count down You'll notice that over here the power is still off on the inverter. And uh, what's going to happen is at the end of 30 seconds, it's going to send the power over to here. And then if this timer conditions are met, then it's going to go ahead and send the power over to here. And uh, we are within those operational hours, so here you should see the power come on with my inverter in just a moment. And there it is. Uh, so. Uh, 
that's what I've got going on here. Um, so um, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up. I know it's been kind of long. I know that uh, there's a lot going on here. Uh, but uh, hopefully somebody gained some information. Um, hopefully uh, you guys will take this and if it's something you wanted to do, uh, go ahead and run with it. Um, I think this will be a safer setup than the redneck option and um, hopefully it'll work for you like it's working for me. Um, so if you've got any questions or comments, feel free to post them below in this video. Uh, if there are any electricians out there that are watching, uh, if you see anything that I've done incorrectly here, uh, please let me know. I'd rather correct things now before uh, I connect my solar panels. Um, I'm hoping that I'm a few weeks from that. I still got, like I said, I've got to dig some post holes. Uh, I've got to uh, do all of the mounting outside and then run the cables from uh, outside about uh, 100 feet behind my house uh, inside. But if you're an electrician and you see anything wild or crazy that I've done here that just isn't right, please let me know and I'll be happy to uh, consider changing things out. So uh, take care and uh, have a good one. Thanks for watching.